In this short video, we're going to walk through the material setup form for a single flat sided project. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the material setup for a two sided project or a wrapped rotary project, then please refer to the two sided machining and wrapped rotary machining tutorials. So to access the material setup form, you need to be in your tool paths tab on the right hand side of your software. Right up the top, use this option here to set your material setup. And a lot of the data that's input in here is based on the data that you entered when you first created your project in the job setup form. And that's been transferred over into your material setup. But before you can go ahead and create any tool paths, the software will automatically open up this material setup form because it's vital that you check over all of the information here to ensure that it matches up with the material that you're actually cutting into and the machine setup that you've got set for this project. So at the top we displayed the active sheet. You can see it says sheet one. So that's just a handy little reminder to remind you what sheet you are setting the material up for. Next up, we've got the material thickness. So at this point, you want to double check the material that you are cutting into and double check the measurement and ensure it matches that that we've got in this field here. If it doesn't, then we need to update this field to the thickness of the material that you're cutting into. Next up, we need to specify our X0, Y0 position or our XY datum position. At the moment, we can see it's set to the lower left hand corner. You can see that because we've got that option selected here. We can also see a red dot here on this graphic to symbolize that's in the lower left hand corner. I can see a red square in my 2D view. And if I switch to my 3D view, I can see the date and position is over here. I'm actually going to tile the windows here so we can see both in this instance. Now if I change that to the top left hand corner, you'll see that that updates here in the 2D view and in the 3D view. Top right hand corner, it's updated here, here and on the graphic. Bottom right, into the middle. But in this case, I'm going to set this up to be in the lower left hand corner. And so ultimately, this represents the location relative to your design that will match the machine tool when it's positioned at X0, Y0. You also have the option here to use an offset. So this allows you to set your date and position to be set to a value that's not X0, Y0. And so if you clicked on that, you could set it to be one by one, for instance, and then that will update that so it's offset like you can see here. In this case, we don't want to do that. So we're just gonna set that to zero, zero there and then just uncheck the use offset option. Next up, we've got our Z zero position. So this is where we set the tip of the tool on our machine to either the surface of the material or from the machine bed. And we can switch between the two like so. And whatever we set here, we must ensure that we set that on our machine. Following that, we've got our rapid Z gaps above our material. So the clearance here is basically the height above the job at which it's safe for the cutter to move at rapid or maximum feed rate. And then we've got the plunge option. And this is basically a gap that the tool will wrap it down to during plunge moves. And you want to make sure that this is appropriate for your own setup, ensuring that you're clearing any clamping mechanisms that you may have on your job so that the tool doesn't go into those mechanisms. So please check over your own clearance and plunge settings, ensuring that they're safe and appropriate for your machine setup. And at the bottom here, we've got the home start position for X, Y and the Z gap above our material. And this is the absolute position that the tool will start moving from and where the tool can be programmed to return to at the end of cutting the job. And so once you're happy that all of the settings that you've applied here match your material and your machine setup and that they're safe and appropriate, then you could go ahead and press OK and then begin to create your toolpaths. 
And at the top of our toolpaths form, we've got a handy little graphic here that displays some of that important information should you wish to just glance over at it. So you can see we've got our clearance at point two here, the material thickness is displayed here. We can, we can see here we're setting our Z0 on the material surface. XY0 position is in the lower left hand corner at 0, 0. And then our safe home position is at X0, Y0 uh, with a Z of 0 0.2. Now if you didn't want to see that, you can go back into the material setup form and just uncheck this option here to show detailed summary. Go ahead, press OK, and you'll see the information is now quite limited. I advise that you just keep that on as it's a handy little reminder of those settings without having to go into your material setup form. So now we're going to look at an additional setting in the material setup form if you are working in our VCarve or Aspire products where you're machining 3D parts. So let's just switch to a session of VCarve desktop. So here we are in a session of VCarve and you can see I've got a 3D model here of Comedy Tragedy. Now when we come to set up our material when 3D parts are concerned, if we go into our material setup form over here, you'll see we have this section and this is where we must position our model in relation to our material thickness. And so the thickness of your model must be smaller than the material thickness that you plan to cut into. And we've got a value here that displays what our current model thickness is. So you can see here we've got three eighths of an inch and our material thickness is half an inch. So we know that this is going to be positioned perfectly fine within our material block. And we've got this handy graphic here that represents the full material that we're using. And where it's lighter, this portion represents our 3D model. And we can use this handy slider here to position where we want our model to go in relation to our material thickness. And every time you let go of the slider, then the software will update that position and display the gap above your model along with the gap below your model. And you, if you wanted to be more precise, you could actually put in here a value that you wanted to for the gap above. So that's the gap that's going to be above your model to the top surface of your material. Alternatively, you could choose to specify the gap below. So here you could say I wanted a gap below of 0.1 for instance, and you'll see that the graphic updates there. And what we're saying here is at the bottom of the model, we're going to have a gap of 0.1 to the bottom of our material thickness. Now generally for your 3D parts, you always want a little bit of a gap above your model just to help with any discrepancies in your material thickness and that will help you avoid any flat spots when you actually come to machine that. Now the only time you really want to push your model right up to the top surface of your material is if you are cutting negative shapes like dishes or recesses where you want the top portion of your model to be bang on at the top surface of your material, assuming that your material is flat. Some other handy options for setting your model position, you can double click on these lines to get it in the dead center, at the bottom or at the top, like so. And then finally, if you do need to alter your model thickness, then you can set that here if you wanted to. And when you use that set option, you can then specify a new height. For example, we can make that 0 0.4, press apply. Once we've applied that, we can close out. And then you might want to come back in here to ensure that your model position is where you want it to be in your material. So we're just going to double click to put that in the dead center there. And that's pretty much how you set up your 3D parts in terms of your material setup. And as always, when you are setting up your material here, please ensure that the settings are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available and the materials that you are cutting into. Thank you for watching.